first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone to the People's House, Jasper City Hall. Appreciate everyone for coming out here tonight. Before we get started, if any of you would like any refreshments, Coke or 7 Up or lemonade or water or whatever, we have it right there in that room behind you. Just feel free to get up and go back there and get whatever you want. Uh, you, the ministers that I asked to participate in this program, I'd like for y'all, if you would, to come up front and sit at the city council uh, table here. What this meeting, and, and I'll tell you what this meeting's all about. Come on up, please, sir. Chuck, come on. Come on. We're going on. <laughs> this is on. Just have a seat. Make yourself at home. That's a hot seat. <laughs> we appreciate you so much for serving tonight. We had, uh, Brother South and Brother Marshall were supposed to be here, and they told me they would, but I, he just told me that they called the radio station earlier today and said they weren't going to be able to make it. I think Brother South has some kind of medical problem. Uh, and why uh, Brother Gary's not here, I don't know, because he told me yesterday he would be, so something must have come up. Uh, what, what I want you all to do, uh, as the mayor of Jasper, I want you all to serve on a committee that will help to facilitate a better uh, uh, understanding and communication and cooperation and feelings between the Jasper Police Department and the people of this town. Uh, we have selected a new police chief here, and he's doing, I think, a, a very good job. Yes, sir. And I'm going to tell you why I think he's doing a good job. is because every time something big goes on in Jasper, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he's there. I like that. And he's been out meeting everyone and talking to them and getting to know the community. Uh, after the deal with the situation with Karaoke Diggles, this, uh, this city council met at this table, we did not feel that the officers did what they should have done. We were appalled. And we dismissed those two officers. And shortly after that, Ms. Kim Milstead, who is with the uh, conciliation efforts of the project of the Justice Department, came to me and she said, I will facilitate and help you to uh, uh, do a better, to bring the community and the police department together. And I told her that we would welcome them. And she was all, and she's, but then she decided, or we together decided, that it might be better if we did that when we got a new police chief and got him in, in, in position and got him hired. Then after we got him hired, there was a time or two that we put off the meeting because of scheduling conflicts and this and that sort of thing. But what we want to do tonight is, with the help of the Justice Department, is to see what we can do to facilitate a better relationship between the police department and the community. The, police, the people of this town have to trust the police department. And the police department has to have their respect. And we want to see what we can do to facilitate that. And that's why I have a syndrome with you pastors, pastors here, not only tonight, but in the future, to be the mayor's committee on relations within this town so that we can have our people. We all live here, and we all work here, we all go to school here, and we all got to live together. And if there wouldn't be police in this town, I'd drive home tonight 100 miles an hour. <laughs> but we got to have police. Right. <laughs> and I'll turn it over to Chief McDonald. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Kim, for being here tonight and offering your services. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Kim Milstead with the United States Department of Justice, uh, Community Relations Service, and uh, let her introduce what our purpose here to, to, to see you. Um, good afternoon. Is it okay if I sit? Can everyone hear me? You can get where you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my name is Kim Milstead, and I'm in the uh, Houston field office. And uh, I initially came down, and uh, my initial contact with Mayor Lott was with the uh, allegations of the uh, with Ms. Diggles, the situation with Ms. Diggles. And I came out and I reached out to the mayor and he was receptive of our services. He said that that's something that we needed to do. We needed to have some kind of dialogue in the community to begin the healing. 
and in talking to him, uh, we discussed possibly uh, putting together a committee that could be advisory to both the mayor as well as the chief. However, the committee didn't have any power to hire, fire, or anything like that, but just in an advisory role. And they would uh, be uh, indicative of the community, uh, the voice of the, of the community. Uh, so I, I'm thankful that he was able to do that, and uh, I'll just stop it there. I have my pad here, so if you see me writing, I'm not, I'm not doing any forms of investigation, because let me explain to you. My arm, we don't investigate, we don't prosecute, neither do we enforce laws. Our role simply is to work in communities to bridge relationships, heal relationships, and keep peace in the community. So I'm not writing notes for the investigation. And, and please understand, I came down here as a result of the incident with Ms. Diggles. It had nothing to do with the uh, situation uh, over in Sabine County. So uh, my concern is the city of Jasper, the relationships with the, with the citizens and the members of the Jasper community. Let me pass this down and uh, ask you all to put name and phone, contact number and email address. Uh, and I'd like to start uh, introduce myself. My name is Bob McDonald. No dog, G. Let me see. I don't like that video dog. I got a big one. There you go. My, my name is Bob McDonald, and I have a uh, uh, long, uh, <coughs> long history in law enforcement. I started my law enforcement career in 1980 in Corpus Christi. Uh, I started as a patrolman. I was a detective there. I was a uh, lieutenant. I was a lieutenant over detectives. So I was in the career criminal program. I was a field captain. I was a traffic captain for six years. And I was a uh, liaison to the uh, chief of police. Started their ComStats program. Uh, was their air alert coordinator. I was the bad guy when I put in the uh, red light cameras. They, uh, they had me program manager of the red light camera program. And, and uh, I retired in 2010 and I went to work in Uvalde as a chief of police. I was there for three years and, and uh, three months and uh, retired a second time. And uh, my wife told me it was time to go back to work when I got an email from a consultant who said that I should apply to be the chief of police at Jasper, that I would be perfect fit. Now, uh, I brought my wife up before the interview and we took a tour of the town and drove around and she thought it was beautiful and she said, well, if you really want to come to Jasper, then go ahead. And I researched the problems that the Jasper Police Department had and looked at the videos and, and uh, read the articles and, and I knew that uh, uh, there was going to be some there's going to be some good times, smooth sailing, and there's going to be some rough times. But what I want to do is tell you what my philosophy that I'm trying to instill on the officers is. The first thing that I put in place is I have an open door policy. And my secretary knows that anybody, anytime, can come to my office, and if I'm there, they're welcome to come in no matter what I'm doing, and sit down and tell me what they're concerned about. And that's the only way that I'm going to find out uh, what, the, what the community really feels about the police. If somebody, for example, if somebody comes in and they're complaining about a speeding ticket, that they don't deserve that ticket, I'll go down and talk to uh, uh, my uh, evidence tech who controls the videos. And we'll, she'll burn the video to a disc CD for me and we'll play the CD and we'll watch the, the traffic stop because the camera backs up 30 seconds so we'll catch the violation. And uh, we'll go over it with them. We'll, and it, there should be audio with it. So to make sure, I, I want to make sure that the ticket or warning they receive is righteous. I also want to make sure that they're treated with respect, no matter who they are. Even a criminal should be treated with respect until that criminal gives the officer a reason not to treat with respect. Uh, I, I had a slogan made, put on the cars. 
unity in our community. And that's not just for the public to see, but it's for the officers to see every time they get in the car. And they see that. And, they, and, and we've talked about that in our, in our department meetings, what it means. That we're not going to have unity in our community until the police and the public are working together and not the police working against the public. I've been fortunate that I've had Captain Gerald Hall to help me. And he's been, been a great help. That we've been working hand in hand with, with the officers. Uh, we've hired newer officers. I've hired two, two officers. Uh, one of them's from here, uh, Todd Griff, Griffin. Uh, he's a, a, a black officer. Anthony Smith was a black officer. And the last officer I hired was uh, uh, a reserve uh, was a reserve officer. Uh, he's a he's a vet. He's uh, was injured in uh, uh, his service in the military, but he's not injured bad enough. He couldn't become a policeman. And that's uh, Todd. Is it Todd Schlosser? Todd yes. Todd Schlosser. And uh, we now we're fully staffed. And we have some officers. Of course, we have uh, Todd or Griffin's in training. He should be getting off training here in the next week. And uh, uh, Come on in, come on in, please. And when when uh, uh, Slosser gets off training, when they're out on their own, then we can we can uh, uh, we'll, be, we'll have the full full staff, and I can make the next move that I want to make is appoint uh, an officer as a mental health officer, and also to try and help clear up the big stack of warrants we have. And I'm not talking about sending them out to arrest people, but to come to this court, try to make a payment plan or some kind of a plan so that they don't get stopped on their way to work or away from work and get, get arrested for the warrant. You know, it, there's a, a class C municipal warrant for a ticket they forgot to pay versus someone that's intentionally getting tickets and not paying them. There's a big difference. The mental health officer, a lot of people don't understand that in police work, we're, we deal a lot with the mentally ill, with the indigent mentally ill. And what happens is they put themselves in positions to make themselves uh, a nuisance to businesses. They also often get arrested for criminal trespass or for shoplifting. And so what in, in effort we're doing is we're making criminals out of the mentally ill, the indigent mentally ill. And that's not the right thing to do. So we have to find a way to address that. And by appointing this officer to be a mental health officer, he's going to go to a, a one-week school where they, where they tra train him, and he's going to handle our, our uh, issues with the, with the mentally ill so that we can keep them from appearing in our jail. They need treatment or they need counseling. The county has a mental health officer, and their program is very successful. Um, the other... The other thing I do is, is when I answer my phone calls, I record all my phone calls of who's called and uh, what they've called about, what their concern is. I get a phone number and a name, and I give it to the officers, and I follow up with the officers when that person's concerned, and I'll call them back and, and tell them you know, what, that we've looked into it, whether we've been able to do anything about their problem or not. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's a, a difficult position to be put in to try and solve somebody's problem and sometimes you can't solve them. All you have to do is try and figure out a way to come up with a solution. And I tell my officers when they come into the office, and uh, uh, so does my lieutenant, my patrol lieutenant, if you're going to complain about something, complain about it, but at least have a solution. You know, come in, come, come and complain to me, but, but have a solution. Let's, let's figure out a way to solve the, the, the issues. And uh, I think we're making some headway, and it's very difficult to measure that because it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a headway that's not measurable. But it is is are we making progress with preparing relationships with the community? Um, we investigate. Well, I, the first thing I did is I issued, without going through the council, I issued a use of force policy, and I attached to it, taser international warnings. The warnings that come with the taser. And when the officers read those warnings, those uses of taser went down. Use of force went way down. The officers are required to fill out a use of force report. And every one of them is reviewed by 
the entire chain of command. The lieutenant, the sergeant that's in charge, the lieutenant, the captain, and if necessary, myself. And if we have to, we'll go back and, and review the videos. I had applied for a JAG grant through the uh, uh, Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Program. <coughs> and what I'm asking for, and I was tentatively approved, if the government approves the funding in October, and that's the body cameras. And what they are is a, is a camera that hangs on your lapel, and it, and it videotapes 180 degrees, and they'll videotape every citizen contact they make. Instead of just having the, the microphone from the car and having audio, now I have audio and video of not only traffic stops, Councilman, not only traffic stops, but also uh, when they go into a disturbance or when they contact somebody on the street or they go into a park or they run into some kids. And if there's a complaint, we have something to look at because we'll keep those videos for 90 days. And I think it's one step if the officer knows that every one of his calls is going to be recorded, that he's going to be more apt to treat people with respect the way he wants to be treated rather than resort to uh, street tactics or you know, what the bad habits they may have picked up from either another agency or, or from a, uh, another partner. So we're really trying hard to do the right thing at the uh, Jasper Police Department. And we're, I'm open for suggestions. Uh, that's what I got my notepad for. I'm open for people coming into the office and, you know, uh, Councilman Scott comes in, we talk a lot, and, and I think We've, we've, made some, we've made some headway in uh, improving the relationship between the police department and City Hall. There's even some strained relationships there. And the city manager, that was one of the first things that she addressed to me when I got hired. He said, see what you can do about improving uh, the relationship between the officers and City Hall. They don't come to the city functions and the picnics. And, uh, and finally, we got, we got them to come to the city employees, officers, felt welcome going to the city employees pick. You know, it's getting rid of that us against them mentality. You know? And that's what officers are taught in the academy. You know, they're taught in the academy, they're taught as they're as they're uh, on the training program, they're until they get two or three years of experience under their belt, they don't know the difference, you know, a lot of times between uh, community relations and being a policeman. And being a policeman is being a, a part of community relations. Not only when they're making calls, but when they're on routine patrol and on traffic stops all the time. They should be trying to improve relations with the community. There's a lot of police officers out there that give somebody a ticket and the person will say thank you when they're done. It's hard to believe, but it's true. So with that, I'll leave it open to you all. To you all. I think I've said enough. Well. Actually, the meeting today was for the community. We want to hear from you. The, the police chief and the mayor have taken steps but they, administratively. They want to hear um, some of your concerns or issues that you may have. And if you have questions directly uh, to the police chief or to the mayor, we're going to be open for answering those. However, um, we're going to have to put some time limits on you. Uh, not going to be able to do a whole dissertation here. So uh, if you have questions, let's, let's get them direct, direct questions and we'll get responses. And if you have something, an uh, issue or something that's concerning you and it's burning your heart, <clears throat> tell us what you might see or how you could see the police chief or the mayor fixing it. So we understand where we're going with this? So would anyone like to start? I'd like to start. Stand, sir. First of all, I'm going to pass the back and forth. And one of the issues that I have is uh, violence through speech. And okay. it causes violence. Uh, the way some of the officers, and not only the officers, but the way some of the judges speak to people out of disrespect. And uh, it can cause one to be violent towards them with arrogance in the way they talk to you. Out of no respect. And I think we all deserve respect. And I, I know myself, 
uh, I give respect because I am a pastor. But it can cause people to be violent the way you talk to them and disrespect you. You can only receive respect by giving respect. And I think something needs to be done about that with the officers today. Uh, uh, and, and not only officers, judges too. The way they speak to people. I know one incident, I, I had gotten a ticket and uh, went in to see a certain judge. He talked to me like I was a child. And I didn't appreciate it. And I am a veteran. And I am a pastor. And I am a man. And I didn't appreciate it. And uh, if, you be, if you speak violent towards someone, someone's going to be violent back. And one of the greatest, other great problems, a lot of the officers can ask you a question. And if you don't answer it the way they want to hear it, they'll tell you, shut up. And that's not a call for. And I'm sorry, Pastor. It. Your name again? Pastor McElroy. I, I, I want to direct you by that. So you're saying it, it's possibly, are, are you asking, uh, okay, the way that they interact with the citizens? Sure. Okay. Um, so are you requesting or suggesting some training on sensitivity or something of that nature. I mean, tell me what you what you would like to see us do about it. Because I understand what you're saying. Yes, when someone comes up to you, for lack of a better word, talking crazy to you, you tend to kind of go get get up there a little bit. So, so you're you're saying that perhaps officers are and, and again, we only have jurisdiction over this, the the folks. That was the question I was going to ask, sir, too, is Mayor Jasper, was this a city judge, state judge, or county judge? This was a city judge. Okay. So that was our city judge. We talked to you well, about that. I can't handle that, but I can't handle any of the judges. Uh, yes, I understand that. Uh, when, when we leaders, we have to act like leaders because uh, the public is looking for us to show leadership. But if the leaders don't show leadership, how do you expect the other ones to, to be the way they want to be? And it causes a problem. Yes. Okay. It causes a great problem. We need to see about getting it fixed. I don't if a person, you take me on, if, if, if someone breaks the law, run a red light or whatever, let's be a leader. Let's talk to them like they're in a duck and not like they're children and stuff and, and one thing or another. I, I've even been asked to stop, you know, where are you going? Where are you working? And they didn't even ask me what I did just because of the car or truck I was driving. Yeah. And it causes a problem. We need to see about fixing things like that. Perhaps I'll talk with the mayor and the police chief about some services that we have available. Perhaps the Chief, would something. it not be an instruction of the department? That the first thing when they get out is to tell that person what their the problem is. Yes, sir. The first thing they should be telling you is their first first their name and, and that they're with the Jasper Police Department and the reason that they're stopping you. And uh, uh, there's actually a seven step violator contact. If they follow that seven steps, it avoids the uh, antagonistic attitude, and that's what we need to probably. That particular program there, that's kind of uh, what it's about when they're out on the streets. Uh, so that, that's something, like I said, we can discuss that at a later time. But again, that kind of goes back to, as the police chief is saying, his training. And that's something he's, he's notating that he's going to uh, look in. And I'm, I'm writing these issues and concerns down as well, okay? Would our, would our count, uh, pastor council have any comment on that subject? Uh, let me say this. Uh, I've been very impressed with our police chief uh, ever since I uh, talked to him in Woodville. We was at a state dinner together. And um, I saw some things happen before he come. But I haven't seen no things happen since he's been there. Um, I was over here at first bank and trust and I was coming out. <coughs> and there was a young Caucasian man there. And I didn't like the way they treat him. But 
they was talking to him so bad. He was trying to explain something to them. They told him, shut up, you know. And, and stuff like that, it, it do. It, make, it, it brings out the worst in you, you know. And, and I have seen things happen. Let me, let me say, now, I wasn't speaking this, I need, I should have brought this out, I'm not speaking this upon a prejudice thing, it's just like what he said. Mm -hmm. This is not a color issue. No, it's not a color issue. It's not a color, color issue. issue. This is just black and white and anybody. Right. What are you talking I'm not talking about a color right. thing. Okay. Well, and, and, and we, we, we're going to, are we, are we agreeable that we're going to put that on our list of issues, perhaps some the police chief looking at perhaps maybe some sensitivity training, but just I'm just using this sensitivity uh, uh, training with some of the police force. Okay. I think it also needs to be ingrained on uh, how we select our training officers and how we train the training officers. Uh, I have seen in my career, and I've seen it here, where a training officer passes off something that he's been taught as something that's an acceptable practice, and then you review it, and it's not. And it, but it becomes an institutional practice, and those are the hard things to change. Those are the hard habits to break. And then when you pull the trainer aside, the guy's been here 20 years or 15 years, and you say, you know, that they that was spinning tires was not a violation of law in the last three or four writings of the penal code. You know, so you can't write a ticket for that anymore. You know. And, and there's uh, uh, the other. The other one is uh, rec reckless conduct. Reckless conduct used to be a charge in the penal code. If somebody were to take a uh, uh, baseball bat, and swing it wildly, at a crowd of people, not hit anybody, not threaten anybody, but you would arrest them for reckless conduct. That's not a charge anymore. You, know, you would actually have to hit somebody with it or threaten somebody with it for it to be an assault. So there has to be good, timely, accurate training of the trainers that are teaching the young guys. And we do have a young department. I know uh, if you haven't noticed that, uh, we have a, new, a lot of new officers and they really need good supervision. And good supervision comes from good management teaching the supervisors. And we have taken great strides expending our training budget, sending the supervisors, all of them, to instead of sending officers off to uh, seminars where they go out and they go to the happy hours and sweet. I've been sending officers, for example, I sent three or four young officers to field training officer school. Well, not, not so much that they're going to be field training officers, but that five days of training, they're going to learn what you're talking about. They're going to learn respect. They're going to learn leadership principles. They're going to learn how they should act as officers and how they should teach because one day they're going to be an older officer. The other one, we've taken every one of the supervisors and sent them to first line supervisor school and we've sent them to quality schools <coughs> where they have quality instructors and hopefully that will improve the supervision where we can avoid the situations that you're talking about. But it, but it takes a changing a deep philosophy and, and, and breaking bad habits and that's what we're sure. That's what we're going to do. That's true. Yes. Did you report the incident to the chief or to the mayor? Did I report it? Yes. No. When it happened? Yes. No. I mean, I mean the next day or a week later did you? I didn't report it to anyone. Anyone. I, I didn't report it to anyone. Well, and there's a reason for that, uh, if I may speak. Uh, a lot of people, let, let, let me say this here, and I want everyone to know this. I'm a mayor, I've been in jail before. I've been arrested before. I've been dealt with by the police. And, and let me tell you something. Father Ron over there is one of the nicest people in this community. But I can go over there and I can talk to him in a form or fashion tonight that will make him be an, another man. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. You like apple pie, River? Huh? You like apple pie? Cobbler? Yeah. Okay, what if I come over and, and, and throw some cobbler down in front of you and tell you, eat it? <laughs> you ain't going to eat it for nothing, are you? Sure. 
You're not lying. You get what I'm saying? You've got to talk to That's people. Right. That's right. And even though somebody, right. th these men, right. we did not have, if everybody would abide by the law, we wouldn't have any need for a police department. Amen. Right. We'd get rid of them tonight. Amen. That's right. But the problem with that is that I'm, I'm telling y'all, I like to, to hit the pedal. And if there wasn't a police between here and my house tonight, I'd leave here doing 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Right? Aye. That's why we got to have police. Because I can't run over Steve's daughter. You know what I'm saying? So we got to have policemen. And but, but because somebody's breaking the law does not give a policeman the right to talk to them like they're a dog. That's right. Talk to them like they're somebody. Because how you start a conversation sometimes determines how it ends. Right. That's right. right? That's right. And I'm fully convinced, and, and, I, and, and this man said he didn't come forth with a complaint. You know why? Probably because he's afraid of retaliation. I mean, a lot of people think, well, if you go report something, a bad incident with a policeman, then they'll write you a ticket every day. That's true. But i am tell you this, as Mayor of Jasper, you come to me anytime, any hour. And I don't, I'll come talk to this man, and I have. And we'll get to the bottom of things. And I won't say who said it or what. Uh, so we have to treat our people with respect. And we have to remember that the police department works for the people of Jasper. Right. They work for you. Yes, sir. And they're out there for you to protect you. Yes, sir. And to protect your neighbor and your constituents and, and your parishioners and, and, and everyone else. So anytime that I want this council. This, this board that I've assembled here tonight, there's two members that are missing tonight. Anytime that something y'all come forth with something other, bring it to me or bring it to the chief. This chief has done an excellent job, in my opinion, yeah. of having an open door policy. <clears throat> I also commend this chief for being at this, almost every major crime that we've had since he was here, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning or whether it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he's there. That's what I like to see. And the other thing that I praise him for is, is that uh, having an independent group to look at the racial profile. The previous administration, they did it themselves, which was not the way I wanted to see it done. I wanted to see an independent group to study the tickets, who was wrote tickets and everything. And, and you went back to having an independent, what is it, Dale? Uh, Doug Carmen? Yeah, Doug Carmen. Uh, group to do, which is one of the best in the state, to do the racial profile. In other words, they come in and look at it. I don't like the police department doing it themselves, which is the way they was doing it before he came here. He has an independent group come in and look at it, do the racial profile, and provide that to the city council. And, and I commend him for that. Uh, but we do have a young department right now. We have a bunch, we have a bunch of veteran uh, police officers but we also have some young police officers. And young men have to learn. And he's doing his best to try to get those police up and up to speed. This man has 35 years experience in this. And, and I think he's doing a good job. But this is what this meeting is for tonight and future. Not just tonight. Come to us with any problems that come that you see in the community that can make the uh, where we can we don't want any divide between the police department and the, and, the, and the citizens of this community. We all have to work and live here together. That's what this is for. That's right. One of the one of the things that that uh, we were lacking when I got here was a, was a was a up to date rules manual, policy manual. And the policy manual that, that we had that was in place was written in 2002. The previous chief Hunter tried started rewriting the manual, but he left before it got finished, and that manual just disappeared into thin air. I was able to find bits and pieces of it. The rules manual's been written. I've, I've rewritten it, and uh, I sent it off to a, a lawyer uh, who, his name is Michael Mirarchi, Mir and he's out of the ILEA, which is the International Law Enforcement Association building, and he teaches uh, litigation-free management, the reset the clock training. With, uh, Mike Mirarchi's clients are some of the largest corporations in America, IBM, Xerox, ADP, 
and as a favor to me, of course it's not going to be cheap, he has taken the manual that I wrote and gone word to word, sentence to sentence, and has been spending the last three months rewriting the manual so that it is litigation free. That, that, that if the officers follow these policies, that they will be free of, of litigation. They will have to worry about getting sued. The, the burden will be on my back and on the city's back. But if they follow the policies that, are, that, that we're going to bring forward to the council in July, July, July 27th meeting, for the council to vote on the manual will be ready. And uh, uh, I should have it ready for the council. At least give them a month. It's going to take, take, take me about three weeks to reread it to make sure that Mike didn't uh, change things. For example, one of the simplest uh, uh, changes that was made is the word discipline. Nobody likes to be disciplined. Right? Disciplinary action. If you do this, you're going to face disciplinary action. The first thing Mike told me, he said, we're going to take the word discipline out of your manual. And we're going to call it corrective action. That you're going to take corrective action. Now, corrective action may be up to and including termination, as in the case of the two officers in, in, the, in the Diggles case, but we're going to take, when an officer makes a, a policy mistake, and it's a mistake, we'll take corrective action. It may lead to suspension or may just lead to counseling and changing behavior. But that's what this new manual is going to be all about. And uh, Mary's going to get it on the 27th. You guys are, hopefully I'll get it to you by the 1st of July so that you'll have time to review it for the meeting on the 27th. Okay, uh, something that I would like to point out to the people in this room and to this mayor's council that I have uh, presented. Jasper is a unique city. It is unlike Beaumont. It is unlike Leesville, Ritter, Lufkin, or anywhere else. In that the fathers of this city, if you want to see them, they're over there in that first picture right there on the wall. See that first picture right there? For some reason or another, they did something unique. They set Jasper different than other cities in. This is one of the few cities in East Texas or West Louisiana. This man does not answer to the city manager. He does not answer to anyone in City Hall. He answers to the city council. Do you understand? We pick him. We choose him. We run him off next week if we want to. The city of Jasper, the, the city council, Alton Scott, Mr. Schofield, Mike Lout, Mr. McMillan, none of us, this man don't work for any one of us. He works for the Jasper City Council. And what that does, that means that he answers only to the City Council. He doesn't answer to the Mayor, he doesn't answer to any particular Councilman, he doesn't answer to the City Mayor, he answers to the City Council. So we as a City Council have the right to question him or to change policies. Like it's this, this new policy, this police manual he's coming forth, it's not effective until this council adopts it. And this gives us a broad spectrum, you see. And I think what those old city fathers up there were trying to do, they didn't want the city manager saying, well, don't give my kid a ticket. Or that you give my sister's <coughs> husband a ticket last week, I'm going to fire you. Well, see what I'm saying? It, 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 it gives it an autonomous. And I think that's great, don't you? Well, I think it's... I think it is true that I answer the city council. I also answer you all, everybody in this room. Right. And, and, and uh, I think as many times as you and Sister Clementine been in the office and <laughs> councilmen been into the office, you know, they know that I answer. And, and, and if they have a concern, that I'll get to the bottom of the concern and, and report back to them what their concern was. Because that's who I work for. I work for everybody in this community. I do answer to the city council, and they have to say so whether I have a job tomorrow, but I answer to the public, because the public is the police, and the police are the public. And with that, we're ready to ask, to listen to other concerns. Okay. Well, hold on, I'm saying thank you. I'm Councilman Scott from District 1. I can probably get more calls than anybody in this building concerning police department. A lot of, a lot of calls, a lot of complaints. People won't, they won't go in. The first thing I tell them, first thing you, when you call me, the first thing I tell you, you need to go into the police station, 
sit down with the chief and file a formal complaint. And make your grievance known. I had a woman call me from, a white lady called me from California. Her nephew was pulled over by the police before, before the chief got here. Her nephew was pulled over by the police. He was searched. Drugs. No drugs were found. So they told him, so you must be trying, you must swallow it. He said, I ain't swallow nothing. He said, well, I tell you what, so he, they, the officers told him, say, well, if you let us pump your stomach and we don't find nothing, we'll let you go. He said, okay, take him to the hospital. Took him to the hospital, pumped the stomach, didn't find nothing, let him go. The next day, they sent him a bill for the hospital pumping his stomach. Anyway, right. Anyway, they pumped the man's stomach and didn't charge him for it, made him pay for it. <coughs> but then the two they were scared to be seized. I talked to this lady out in California. She was scared to, to he, know, he wasn't going to file a complaint. She wasn't going to come in and file a complaint because he was scared of retaliation against him because he had a record. And that's a big problem in Jasper. People are scared to file a complaint because they're afraid of retaliation. Even if they don't have a record, they're still scared. Yeah. They'll call me at 2 o'clock in the morning with a complaint. I get called all the time. And the first thing I tell them is go down to the city, go down to the police station. Just sit down and talk to the chief. He's an honest man. He's he going to do what's right and, and file your formal complaint. Make your, make your grievance known. Because if you don't file a complaint, ain't nothing going to be done. Right. So you have to file a complaint. Well, let me ask this with regards to your committee there. Um, and since it's been said, or I'm just using this, I'm not saying, it appears that retaliation occurs with regards to the police. Now, the committee that you established, is it possible in their duties that citizens can go to this committee and file complaints and the complaints will be given anonymously? Is that something that we could consider that committee doing, uh, Councilman? Well, when they file that complaint, they still have to sign it. Well, I'm saying they will, have, they will sign it with this committee, but the committee would let it come out without anonymously. Well, it, the police department's policy I guess you can't investigate it. Yeah, it's hard to investigate. What, what investigate. The, the police department's policy right. is, Ms. Ms. Milstead, is that if someone has a complaint against the police department and they file a complaint, it has to be signed by that individual. Mm -hmm. But that said, this committee, I would in, 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 invite anyone in the community to go to any member of this committee with any complaint. And, and these are pastors, and if they want to come to me and tell me this is what happened, but we don't want to tell you who told us, or we don't want to leave, really, I have no problem with that. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that at all. And, but I do understand what you're saying, sir, uh, to make, and I guess you say a color of law complaint. You would definitely, if you're saying your civil rights were violated and you wanted to take it all the way to the legal system, you would have to go into yes. the police department. However, if you just want to get something looked at, um, you think we could use the avenue of using this committee here? That could be something that the committee could use? Could yes, ma'am. Um, <coughs> at one time, I think they had a committee yes, that was looking at some of the things that they had because they asked me to be on the committee. Uh -huh. And the problem, I don't know what happened to it, but all of a sudden it was dissolved. Okay. Because I, just before all this, up, well, before a lot of the racial stuff that came out with uh, Officer Pearson, it, it was dissolved. Okay. And I got a letter saying you know, your service is no longer needed. So if you're going to have a committee, because they said it wasn't, legal to have a committee. That's what I was told. If you're going to have a committee, would it be um, legalized? Could they, by law, look at these problems? Because that's what we were doing. I didn't get to look at but maybe two. Right. And one of them was a relative, so I didn't, I, you know, this is Jasper. Just about everybody here is related in some way or another. But uh, would the committee be legally obligated to look at, the, at these problems that they have, well, even if they that, are anonymous, because they had a committee at one time. May I address that, Ms. Yes, uh, mayor David Barber, uh, before I was mayor, uh, commissioned a group known as the Citizens Police Review Committee, and it was Mayor Barber's idea of that was to have 
if someone had a complaint, they felt that the police department did not do them right, or something that, the, that would be this independent committee of people that would look at that and decide what the police department, whether they handled it correctly or not. You were on that committee, I understand? I was. Okay. And I know Billy Woolford was on that committee, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, who? No, she was looking back. I, well, I, was, I think it was about, I was it six or eight people on that committee? I think, I think it was six. Okay, six. Uh, I thought that committee was a very good thing for Jasper, and I thought that Mayor Barber uh, was very innovative in doing that and that it would, would handle, the, you know, a lot of situations. The problem was, uh, me as mayor, I got a call one day from the Texas Attorney General, and they told me that that committee was illegal. And the reason that that committee was illegal was because the view of the Attorney General's office was that we were looking at personnel. You get what I'm saying? In other words, we were deciding whether employees of the city had carried themselves out correctly or not and in fact it, it came to us that that the that, that employees of the city of Jasper because they were city employees could only their conduct could only be reviewed by their supervisory personnel or by a city council in executive session and the point that it was being done in the open. So the Attorney General advised us not to do that anymore. And I took that to the city's attorney. He called and made conversation with them and decided that no, we couldn't do that. So I thought it was a very good thing. And I would be for it tomorrow. Now, back to this group here. They can review a situation or they can hear it or whatever, but they can't know the officer involved or decide, in other words, have anything to do with his conduct or whether he's terminated or whether he's demoted or whatever. So we can still somewhat do that in a autonomous mode with this group here. A, a complaint can be brought to them and they can investigate or do whatever, but they can't decide whether that employee is to be demoted or fired or whatever, according to the Attorney General. You know, even, even before that committee, Mayor R.C. Horn formed, formed a committee, I think it was called Committee Community, Committee for One Jasper, in 1989, <coughs> in that committee. And at that time, there was about 15 of us, and we asked the city council members to invite us to their ward meetings. And, and each ward set up a meeting, and we, all we were supposed to do was listen. I found that very, very helpful because the people knew that we didn't have we had vested interests, but but we weren't going to make a judgment. And and I went to all of them. I think there were eight or nine meetings, and I was amazed at what I learned from going to the different wards because the people really spoke from the heart. And we came together and met for a full year after that, trying to solve each of those problems. Some of them we couldn't solve. I remember um, one committee, one group wanted lights on their street, uh, on their road where James Bird was dragged, and we really had no funding for that. But I learned a great deal, and I think the people began to trust us because we were supposed to wear these little yellow buttons all the time. And I was stopped all over the city because I wore my yellow buttons. And people wanted me to to take notes, and, and, and it was very very helpful. And I think if, if, if that could be formed again, well maybe we could visit each ward, and if the city council persons would invite the people of, of their ward to come and speak their concerns, it could be again a helpful thing. You know, let me say this, Father Ron, that we must all remember that we're all human. <laughs> We're going to mess up. And police are human. And they're going to mess up. I had a woman come to see me one day and she was so mad. She said a policeman took his badge off and threw it on the hood of the car and threatened to whip my grandson. 
And I thought, you know, I just don't believe that that guy would do that. This, I'm not going to say, I, did, I just don't think that officer did that. But I told her I'd go check it out. And I went to Captain Gerald Hall, and he said, well, she ain't telling it quite like it is. He didn't throw it on the hood. He threw it on the ground. And he's already been uh, uh, given uh, two weeks without pay or whatever. I wouldn't have believed that officer would do that, but he did. Captain Hall had it on video. So, <clears throat> you know, as mayor of Jasper, somebody calls me and they tell me something other, I take every bit of it for real because I would hope it wouldn't happen, but it has. We had a situation in the police department over there where two officers dealt with a, with a woman, a suspect. And I think that Councilman Scott, he or I cannot tell you what went on in that executive session because we'd be violating the state law. But he and I can tell you that this council acted because we're not going to violate it. How long did it take us, Council? Was there even any discussion? We're not going to tolerate it. So what I'm telling you is we may have our police department do something wrong tonight, one of our, one of our policemen. We may have one of our water workers for the water department treat somebody with disrespect tomorrow. We may have one of these ladies up here at the front office treat somebody with disrespect tomorrow. But this council and this mayor is not going to stand for it. But we, we're dealing with people here, you know, and that's why we're having this meeting tonight, is to realize that our police department is not uh, uh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I mean, they, they, they make mistakes, and when they deal with it, we want to know about it, and we're going to deal with it. So whoever wants to video or, or take pictures, can. Okay. And, and both of these cameras are welcome. Yeah. Uh, my first question is, I'd like to understand the dialogue about we can cooperate with the police chief in his 35 years experience to facilitate a more open and welcome community for, for all of us. Because one of the first things I've heard is that we need to open up the dialogue. And then second to that, for him giving us a 10-point list, what we can do as a community to rise to the standard that's acceptable for him as a 35-year veteran in the police industry and a professional. And second, in keeping to that, I'd like to hear what Father Ron said expounded upon. I didn't understand the definition of the war, but I think it would be extremely helpful if we went to different community, like North Quarters, I'm from Jasper, that's a place, North Quarters, South Quarters is a place. And we help hosted different meetings outside the city hall, but bringing the city professionals, you mayor, you police chief, Daryl for sure, city councilman, so that they feel like they have more of a voice. Because the one thing I see in the citizens here is they are scared. Mr. Hancock, I could address this that. You set up any meeting in any part of town at any time, in any hour, and me and this police chief will be there. Well, uh, Father Ron mentioned the war. Where were those? He's talking about this. Sorry, I can't use the term. Just the council districts. Yeah. So you would have a district council meeting mm -hmm. in each of the five districts. That's right. And so you can do them at different locations. Basically, what he's saying is council for each district. Come back to in his district and have room to meet within the, within the district to discuss the problem, the dark concern in each district. Well, As like you can see, I've just turned up all of these districts oh, so see. that you can see them. Okay. And, and you set up a meeting in any one of these districts, any time, any hour, and me and the police chief will be there. Well, I'm, I'm just asking Father Ron if, if that was successful in the past, if, how was that facilitated? Well, the, the, it was in the newspaper, um, and, and everybody was invited. I remember at, at a couple of them, there was 30 people there. Uh, at a couple of them, there was 90 I went to one of those meetings at Reverend Lyons Church. 
you remember that, Reverend? I was there. Thank y'all. So I, I'm going to restate, I believe, what I believe Mr. Hancock yes, is right. saying. I, I think he's, and I'm reading it, you, you think that idea of going to the different wards or districts Correct. could be a good idea Certainly. to hear the true concerns of the particular community. Because it appears the gathering at the city hall is could be somewhat intimidating. So, I guess that would be something we would put to that com to that committee. Would that be a way that they would function? And I believe, if I'm hearing it correctly, that is a possible way that you will function. And, and, I, and I, we can get together with the mayor and his committee to set the parameters. Sure. Yes. Right. And, 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 and keep, keep it point. Councilman Scott, for instance, represents District One. Okay. But he 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 really represents all of Jasper when he has to vote because he has to make decisions that are not only good for his district but for the entire town. But his interest is District One, and if Councilman Scott would like to have a meeting in his district, let's say. It, the Greater New Bethel Baptist Church, somewhere I, 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 I have no, I mean, we have no problem coming there and doing whatever. And we are ready to go and travel. Now, let me ask you this how, how would this look? Perhaps, what if the community, Mayor, if the community only wanted to meet with the committee? And then, of course, this committee is set up to report back to you, but how would that go over? If the community say, listen, we want our, only our council person and the committee there. I wouldn't have any problem with that whatsoever. Would you, Chief? Not at all. If the, if the committee wanted to have a meeting, for instance, at the Greater New Bethel Baptist Church, and they only wanted to meet with this mayor's council, fine with me. Bring back recommendations for us as to how we can better serve the community. That's something that the community could live with? Yeah. I think you had something... I just when you said this was somebody said open forum, was this publicized? This meeting? Yes. How did you know about it? I was watching the six o'clock news and they said it's in progress right now. Okay, so but, it, but, it, but it was so it was publicized that. or you wouldn't have known about it. No, Augustine Garfield well, so that told it told it on okay, the Okay, well I told news. about it last week. It was not week. like an announcement. He well, just said they're having a call meeting and it's in progress now. That's that's all I wanted to know. Well, did, how many of you read about it on the website or on the radio? Okay. So, it, it was publicized. I didn't read it on the website. Or the radio. It was on the website and the radio. Two minutes after six on the news. I just yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. But this is not the only meeting we're going to have. I understand. So, if we have another one, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to publicize it better. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Can, can I? Yes, sir. I was... I would just think of the concern about our young officers. Okay. How are they elected? How do they, they just go in and... The hiring process. The hiring process. Explain that, Chief. Okay. What, I, what I instituted when I got here, the hiring process is the first, the first is accept the application, and we'll do a, uh, before we invite them in to take the written test, we'll do a kind of a mini background, see, see if they're, we'll look at their, History and the TCLIOs, for example, if they've been with other departments, you know, if they've been with three, four other, five other departments, I may not even take a look at it. If they're just out of the academy, we'll call a couple of the references. If they look like a good candidate, we'll bring them in and we'll give them a written test. If they pass the written test, then we'll set up a five uh, person interview. And it's a structured interview where I put the questions, and the questions are geared toward honesty, integrity, and uh, uh, <clears throat> discipline, you know, it's, it, it's got a, it, the, the questions, there's a couple of questions that are designed, there's 20 questions in the interview, and there's the five panelists, and, and, and they're designed to uh, reveal if the person has the integrity, the honesty, the fourth right is to become a, a Jasper police officer, for example. One of them is, you know, your senior officer, you're riding with uh, Bax's patrol car into a pole, dents the car, bends the pole, and drives off and doesn't say anything. What would you do? 
well, the rules would say that, one, you need to report it because it was a fleet accident, and face, you know, you're going to face some music, you damage a police car. And this guy is supposed to say, well, I tell the guy that he needs to call his sergeant or supervisor and report the accident. If he doesn't, I will. You see what I'm saying? It's I understand what you're saying. Are the young officers being taught what the law is? Yes, sir. Of, well, not in Jasper County. In another county, uh, a young officer came up to me and told me that I couldn't do something because he was the law. And I had to explain to him that the law has already been written. you just the law enforcement. And a lot of times our young officers, when they strap on the pistol and the little bag, they think that they are the law, but they are law enforcers, but they can't enforce the law because they don't know what the law is. And they need to be taught the do's and don'ts of what the law is. We have to be taught, uh, when I was military, we had to be taught different things of how to act and what we could do and what we couldn't do. Do they understand the law of Jasper County or Jasper City? Do they know instead of taking it in their own hands? A lot of times they want to take it in their own hands and say, you can't do that. Well, what I'm doing could be legal in my eyes and not legal in their eyes. So they don't know the law. We have a field training officer program. they got to ride with a trainer for three months and then they have two weeks. As a Why we don't send them to school? Why can't we send them to school for six weeks or eight weeks? Right no, they got to do before they can they they become a, a police officer. Yeah, they, they, and they, they learn the, the state. They go to the academy. Why don't they go to school here and learn the laws of Jasper? Because we adopt the city the city laws that are mostly all state laws. Do they know them? Yeah, they know them. Yes. They have to take a test. They don't know them. They the law. But they got the gun on well, the bed. Sir, I can tell you that what you're saying happened to you happened to me one day. What's that? The same thing. What, what happened to you? Somebody told me that I was parked in the wrong place and I had to move there. And I said, what law says that? He said, because I see it. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that that can't happen. But before they can be t close certified, they have to take a test, and that test is a written test of the state statutes and laws, traffic codes, and so on. Am I right? That's 200, 200 questions, Joe? Yeah, I understand <coughs> that, but our, our young officers, in their mind, they are the law. I mean, and, we, and, you, and he has to work on that. And we understand that. that. We're trying to break that. We understand that, but they don't understand because they don't know the law. They say, I'm the law. And they're not the law. They highway patrolmen, they law enforcers, enforce what's been written. But what's been written? Do they have a sheet of paper with something on there what's been written? They don't understand it because it's not written. And they'll make up things of their own self and say, I am the law. Why are you the law? I but, got this but, on. But that's also why we have a system of courts in this city. So if somebody writes you a ticket or something and it's not the law, that the judge will decide that. That's true. I'm not just necessarily talking about tickets. Because if you if, if you get stopped and you're doing wrong, you're going to get a ticket. Let's see if we can't get our young officers and our older officers to enforce what Jasper County law is. I understand. And a lot of them don't know it. I understand. Mr. McMurray. That uh, Ron McMurray, president of the Jasper New Medical Society. First, uh, let me thank the chief for meeting with our organization at least twice and sitting down with the physicians and giving us a good, broad, healthy understanding of, of what he's about, what he's trying to do, and certainly as our unanimous support. I, I think um, what this gentleman has illustrated is really shining a light on the, on the situation, but we have to have to realize that human, we have to run the police department with human beings, and that's probably our, our biggest failing. One of the things that happens to us as human beings is that when we find ourselves in a situation that's very difficult, stressful, and high conflict, if we don't know what to do, we haven't been trained what to do, we do what was done to us. And sometimes that always isn't the best thing. Uh, and I think that the, the chief is looking at that because one of the things is that we don't have enough money to hire new police officers every 60 days. You know, if, you know, we can wait uh, on and watch anyone close enough and find something they've done wrong and fire them. 
and it, you know, it's, we can justify it, you know. And, but uh, then you're also firing a lot of experience. But I think that what the, uh, the chief is talking about is an educational process. And what our, our lady from, uh, is uh, offering is uh, training for that. Because not only police officers, uh, you know, this committee, this, uh, you know, could also use this type of situation. What do you do when you're in stressful situations and you haven't been trained? I think the chief has outlined various programs that's knocking on that um, every day. It's getting better and better. But every organization likes to think that it has a good program of service improvement, quality improvement, and sometimes they point to uh, mistakes that are problems that developed and, and how they dealt with it. And sometimes that way of dealing it is finding out what the problem is and figuring out who is associated with that problem and then getting rid of them. Putting someone else in there and saying, oh, great, now we're making progress. Now you may have gotten rid of somebody who had 15, 12, 20 years experience, but you had this one issue and because you wanted to show that you had a quality improvement program and this guy didn't meet the quality, he's gone. Um, we're in a situation that I like to call a quality improvement by human sacrifice. And that is one of the most primitive and least efficient forms of quality improvement service that we can do. Uh, somehow, um, most of these situations we are, need to deal with the human aspect and sit the man or, or woman down and say, look, let's kind of work through this program. What could you have done better? What would you have done differently? What would have happened? And if that educational process gives us people that have greater depth and capability of impacting problems, but more often than not, uh, this, the stress thing is something that uh, when it goes to pot, it's because someone didn't have, the, at, to that point, had not been given the correct opportunity. And I think if we focus on that opportunity, you know, to improve this situation and encourage them to believe that uh, we have an open door policy that the mayor has and the chief has and that just because they get a complaint doesn't mean the end of the road. In fact, um, you know, we might even want to convince them that here's an opportunity to be a better officer and it's just how to learn that. I think every time I've had a, had a complaint and I've had many um, when I get the information and, and listen to what was said, I have never failed to find out something that I couldn't improve on. That's very grateful. So I want to really appreciate what, what you folks are doing and, and encourage us. Though. But now, the committee is going to need this type of sensitivity training, too, because it's not, we're all in the same boat, all of us. And the situation changes every day. And as soon as we realize that we're not an island, that this is what happens to human beings under stress, now how are we going to manage that stress? You know, Mr. McMurray, too, another thing that should be mentioned here is that the Jazz Police Department's having a very tough time filling these jobs. And guess what? It's not only the Jasper Police Department, but Lufkin and Nacogdoches. Fewer and fewer people every day are wanting to be policemen. And one of the reasons is, is because of the pay. Uh, we were told by Angelina College the other day that uh, the Angelina College Police Academy uh, is, is, is shrinking in numbers, and they say because more people in the East Texas area are going into oil and gas work. Uh, there's a lot of money going on in the oil packs right now, and, and basically anybody who wants to work can get a job in the oil patch these days and make a lot of money and they just don't want to, I mean, am, am I right? It's, 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 it's Nacogdoches, Lufkin, everywhere around is having trouble, even Beaumont's having trouble filling police jobs now because of the petroleum uh, boom in, in East Texas. Now, I know many of the police officers, and I don't know any, that if he wanted to, couldn't hang up the, the gun in the bag and make two to three times what he's making as a police officer. So we should be feel uh, proud that we have people with this much dedication to stay stay in the in the game and put up with it. I don't know what we do now. One of the
the officers I have working for with me, I should say, is, is uh, Officer Dry comes from a uh, family, the, the Barry family of Corpus are all millionaires. His parents are millionaires. And they're constantly trying to convince him to get out of the police work and come to work for the family company. He's a dedicated police officer. And uh, uh, he's one that I don't have to look over his shoulder. Because I know he's doing the right thing and he knows the thought of all. He doesn't, doesn't uh, I don't think I had a, I've had a complaint on him since I've been here. You think of one Jerry Jer Jer and he's uh, uh, one of the higher producers. But uh, one of the things I'm going to try and avoid with this police department is being the frog in the well that takes two steps forward and one step back when I'm trying to get to the top of the well and, and bring, you know, they say the cream rises to the top. We want all 21 of our patrol officers to be at the top of the well, not just a few of them. We want, we want, and it comes to training, uh, constant training. The state <coughs> mandates certain hours and certain types of training for each level of certification. For example, a police officer to become a basic police officer has to be here at least a year. He goes from basic to intermediate. He has to have so many hours of training in certain classes. From intermediate to, uh, what's next, we jump advanced. <laughs> From intermediate to advanced, you have to have so many years of service and so many hours of training. And then from advanced to masterpiece officer, you have to have so much education, so many years of service, so many hours of training. I've been a masterpiece officer since 1990, probably. And uh, it's been hundreds and hundreds of hours of training to get there and uh, 10 years of service. And, and plus, I have my associate's degree. Fortunate that I had a chance to get my bachelor's degree. I put myself through college later and get my bachelor's degree. <laughs> I come under a lot of fire because of, of a previous administration that I was in opposition to. And one of the questions that I asked that chief was, Who are your training officers? And he couldn't tell me. There was no training going on in the Jasper Police Department. The Jasper Police Department has, over the last few years, has suffered from a lack of training. Uh, and, and this chief here, He's not only uh, instituted a training program, but he's also made sure that the training officers are trained to train. That makes a big difference. You know, you have to have certified law, uh, officers that are certified to train and are taught to train, and then they have to do right on down to shooting a gun, to the everyday patrol work. This is critical to a department. Uh, as a mayor of Jasper, City government seems very simple to me. And, and I'm going to tell you what it is. When people call a policeman tonight, they want a policeman to come to their house. And they don't want just a policeman. They want a educated, equipped policeman that can handle the situation. When they call the fire department, they want the firemen to come now. And they don't want just a fireman standing there at their door. They want him to have a, the equipment to put out the fire to do what needs to be done. Okay? When they turn on the light, they want the lights to come on. When they turn on the water, they want the water to come out of the spigot. When they put the garbage out there in the can, they want it to be carried somewhere else. And when they flush the commode, they don't care where it goes, but it want, they want it to go somewhere outside their house. Okay? It's simple. And that's what city government is to provide, safety and services to the people of this community. And that's what we have to have. That's why we've got to have a good police department that's equipped and ready to roll at any hour. We have to have a fire department that's equipped and ready to roll at any hour. Those are the primary things. Then the garbage, the sewer, and everything else, that comes way on down there. Uh, streets to drive on, but, but police and fire, we've got to have that 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, and we've got to have competent people to, to come out. And at the same time, we've got to have a policeman that pulls you over and gives you a ticket for doing 40 and a 20, or let's say 50 or whatever it is. What, 30 is the minimum speed limit? 30 is the minimum Okay, 50 and a 30, you broke the law, write you a ticket, but treat you with respect and dignity because you deserve it. 
I do want to say about the training, if it weren't for Captain, Captain Hall, Gerald, he's, he's the one that uh, coordinates most of, my, most of the training for, for the officer, almost all of, all of the training. And, uh, and he's done a good job with the thin budget we've had in uh, getting the officers the maximum uh, amount of training for the public. And it's important we have a good com have a good command staff in place, good, good supervisors in place, and we when we review your complaints from citizens, that tells you where your holes in your training. <coughs> For example, I had a, a person come to my office and complain they got a ticket, and the officer wrote them a ticket on the yellow advisory sign and said the speed limit sign because it was a curve. Well, the officer was the first week out of, out on the street by himself and thought. You know, they had never addressed that while in his training. And of course, we corrected that. We decided that the judge to dismiss the ticket and uh, sat the officer down, explained to him, retrained him, retrained him what the, what the law was, and apologized to the citizen that got the ticket in her. And uh, we admit that we were wrong. And uh, I take responsibility for that because it, it, it's something that I should have missed in this guy's training. And that's why we have a field training officer manual that every day of the training they document what they've been trained in. And you can go back through the manual and we can see, well, how many times this guy's done a, uh, made a DWI arrest. Maybe, maybe he hasn't made that many. And so we need to put him out and with somebody that's good at making DWI arrests so that he learns how to do it correctly. And you're correct. Most of you who know me know that I don't live in the city of Jasper, so I'm speaking as an outsider. And first, I want to point out something to you as an outsider, and I'll word it this way. I am here representing the Texas Advisory Committee to the United States Commission on Civil Rights. I'm a member of that committee. I will be writing a report and submitting it to our chairman and then to our Washington, D.C. staff member. And so I just want to give you a general uh, wording of what I'm going to report. The city of Jasper held a town hall meeting that had representatives from the mayor's office, the city council, the police department, spiritual leaders in the community, citizens in the community, business owners in the community, medical professionals in the community, all concerned about this issue. I want you to hear that and see that, no matter how bad things are. There are some cities that couldn't even have this kind of meeting and get together. It's, all, it's, it's good, it doesn't fix everything, but it's good. And the commission in Washington, I'm sorry to say, knows about Jasper. But I want them to hear this because it is good news. Not only do I represent the Texas Advisory Committee for the commission, I live in Jasper County and I care about the city of Jasper. And listening to you, I, I'm going to ask the committee, the mayor and the chief of police, to consider something. There is a nationally recognized program for cities, especially for citizens in the city and the police department, called CAP, Clergy and Police Partnerships. I'm personally not trained in it. We do not have it in Kirbyville where I live, but I have friends who are part of CAP programs. And everything I know about it, many of these situations would be precluded because you have pastors in town who go through 10 weeks of training and then they are partnered with 
a police officer. And a lot of the situations never arise for two reasons. Police get the help of a spiritual leader who has some character, integrity, discipline, and training. The citizens get to see their pastor riding around with a policeman. And sometimes, in certain situations, the pastor can get out of the police car and take care of the situation if it's according to the training. And I'm only suggesting that the committee look into that and that the chief looks into that and that if there's total agreement. And I hope you understand that if this is something you want to do, it means extra work for the pastor. <laughs> it, it, it is going not just one step beyond, but 10 or 12 steps beyond signing a complaint form. I would like to stay and listen to the rest of the meeting. The mayor mentioned the fire department, and I'm supposed to give a report at the fire hall 20 minutes ago. But I, I'm encouraged. By everything I, I think I've that heard the chief is happy and what I see. With the, the, the trouble, uh, yeah. yeah. The previous chief did. Uh, here's uh, not uh, Hunter. Hunter had some pastors that did that. So but, we, we, we'll look at that. But, but this gives the pastors yeah. 10 weeks of professional training on how to act, relate, and be a uh, help to the policemen they ride with. And I'm in contact with Kim and available to work with anybody here on any of these issues. And I want you to know, not only is your city demonstrating concern, the federal government is concerned. The state of Texas is concerned in a good, helpful way. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to express a concern? What about members of our committee? Do you all have something that you would like this police department to do or not do? Do you have any suggestions that you'd like to bring forth tonight? Uh, 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 let me say this, ma'am. Uh, I've been pastoring the 32 years, pastoring. And I have dealt with a lot of people. Relationships are something that don't happen overnight. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. You got to build relationship. And that's what we're trying to do right now. And I want to commend you and the chief of police for, uh, for what you're doing. You know, because we got to start somewhere. And I want to thank Miss Millstead for not giving up on us. <laughs> she, she called me so many times. I mean, she wouldn't let it go. <laughs> and I want to thank her for just hanging in there, you know, because we need this. Sure. You know, and this could work. I know it can. Well, when she first come to me, Reverend, uh, you know, she didn't tell us we got to do this. Mm -hmm. She said, "Here I am, and I can. I'm coming to help you." Right, right. And I said, there. "And I said, please." That's why right. you showed me over it. That's why. Right. But the only thing was that then we decided that it might be better to wait until we had a police chief. Mm -hmm. Because anything that we would work out with the captain or whatever, that right. can't really be set into action. But a police chief, new police chief, well, then we decided to let him be here a little while and, and kind of settle in. Well, then I think the next thing that we had was Ms. Melstead setting a date for that meeting, and I had told a friend of mine that I would help him with something he was doing mm -hmm. in Dallas, and I told him like a month ahead of time that I'd be there on that day, so I had to do it, and she didn't want to have it without the mayor being there. So then the next deal we had... Uh, I'm trying to remember. We said another date. And there was a, I don't remember what that problem. Was. It was just a miscommunication with the date. Yeah, 
And then she also has a very busy schedule. I know. She goes all around the South doing what she's doing here today. Yeah, I know. But she brings a wealth of knowledge yeah. here to help us deal with situations. And, and what we want to do is not deal with situations. We want to avoid situations. Right. <laughs> so, and that's why we want to have this meeting tonight. And we're going to have some other meetings. Good. And I entertain to this committee that I have appointed you all, uh, and the two that are not here tonight, to, if you want to have a meeting in your church or your part of town or whatever, let's do this. And, but at the same time, we, we, we might meet what would you suggest, Ms. Mel Well, what I was going to th I was going to meet with you after so we can get okay. some dates together and I can get all their contact information so... I can meet with you so we can develop the parameters for the committee and then after we meet then I, I think would it be better at that time to come back with the community or would, the, would you guys prefer going directly into the districts? Okay. I would like to be in charge of the calendar because the mayor has a problem with the calendar.
and we know that you're going to be in the midst of us, and everything is going to work out for the best. So we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Reverend, I'd like to say something here if I could tonight before we close this meeting. I want to speak to this committee. We have a problem in Jasper that we're all going to have to deal with. And it's called dope. We had one of our young men up here shot the other day, killed. And this ain't, this ain't a black, white, it ain't Mexican, it ain't Jewish, it ain't Italian, it ain't nothing. Got it's dope. Yeah. It's green. Right. Money. Yeah. And I, I, this police department, I'm on his rear to crack down on this dope. And we have all got to do this together. We have got to crack down on this dope in our community because it has destroyed. It's destroyed my family. It's destroyed all of us as family and our children. And, and, and a lot of it. It ain't, it ain't just marijuana, methamphetamines, it's pills. Hmm. But I'm on him to crack down on this dope problem in our Jasper because we see it in our children. We see it in our young man up there shot down the other day. That's right. Right here in Jasper. That's right. We used to see this in Houston, in Port Austin, everything, hmm. now it's in Jasper. That's right. And we all going to have to, we all got to live here, and we all have to deal with this. Help us with it every time you can. All right. So what you're telling us is bad. Yep. Okay. It's worse than what we think. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir, for coming. I just want to see what y'all see. Y'all have your calendar, right? Y'all have your calendar. Oh, is that right? How are you doing?